put this on. Are we live now? Yes. <laughs> oh. Good start to the live today. <laughs> Are we good? We're there? Yeah, we're there. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the studio. A chaotic morning this morning. Uh, we're going to work on four ways to repaint or to try and fix a painting. Are we good? We're on Jumbo on Instagram. It, it's like got a weird overlay and I can't get rid of it. Just keep going. Okay, we're going to keep going today. Um, the uh, Hugo's babysitter isn't here today, so this is going to be interesting. He's here. So it might be a little chaotic. Might be cut short. We'll see how this goes today. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm David Austin with DavidAustinGallery.com with a rough start today. And that is my beautiful wife, Kristen. And then this is Hugo wandering around here looking for trouble. So I've got four old canvases, really old canvases with some starts on them, various starts. Um, and we're going to talk about how we can get these restarted. And some of the ways that I do that to recycle the canvases. Now you can just rip and shred some of these up and then do a collage. Now I've done quite a bit of that. And there's some previous videos on that uh, process as well. So you can check that out. Go to our YouTube or in our Insta and you'll see some older videos about collage work. It's kind of fun. It's a lot of fun to do that. And it's kind of satisfying to just rip them up. Today though, we're just going to talk about repainting the surface. All right. Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to put my gloves on because it gets messy in here. I'm using a lot of material today, mostly acrylic. Now you could go, these are acrylic based. So you could take your oil colors and go over the top of the acrylic. You can't really go the other way. It's not recommended. These are Cobra water mixable oil colors. These are a lot of fun. You gotta check these out. Solves the problem of using solvents in the studio. <laughs> Which <clears throat> I'm finding more and more um, problems with that. Yeah. So one of the things I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna just wipe this one right out. And so I have down here that you can't see a uh, rolling pan of gesso. It's just plain old gesso. You could use flat white. Uh, latex acrylic paint from house painting. I don't think it is as recommended because of the absorbency issues maybe, but um, this is a gesso right in the roller. So I'm just putting a nice even coat on it. Now the, the roller leaves a texture and you can leave that texture. Some people like to use the texture and uh, it looks good with your different kinds of media that you work into it. You can also take and do some texture through it using one of these, which is like a tile tool. I found that in hardware. And you can just profito into that and create some textures that you can then come back through, let that dry a little bit, and then paint over these things. So that's just a really quick way. Already we have something that's very interesting, more interesting than the previous one. Now, let's go. Hey, can we move over a little bit? You okay there, Kristen? Yeah, I'm just holding it. Hold, hold, and do go. <laughs> <laughs> the other exciting thing today is that it's our, our third, every third Saturday, we have a studio open house here at, in Duluth, uh, Minnesota. And you guys are welcome to come by if you're here. It's in the afternoon, one to four Central Time, Duluth. We might post a little video later. We don't know. Um, so this is a heavy body acrylic gesso. And this is really thick stuff. And I love using this to start over, especially if you have a textured painting. Like this painting here has a lot of texture on it. It's a lot of texture and really, really, really thick texture. So really what I'm, to get that out, to get that background out, I have to go back over it with some heavy gesso. And so you can cover the whole thing with this gesso or you can selectively block out some of the areas. So I'm gonna just kind of go through and selectively block out because there's certain things about this painting that I like, and then there's some things that I really, really don't. So I'm gonna go over. Thank you for the heart, guys. Like this. And we'll come back to these because we're gonna work in a series today. Last week we talked about how I work in multiple pieces at once. And today I'm gonna to continue that theme, but we're repainting some of these. Working this color or this part of heavy gesso in. You can use other tools to fashion this after you're done with the main. I can't let you go back to the house because we're all in the studio today. Yeah. yeah. 
You want to paint your, want to paint on your He gear? wants to make ice paint. Oh, well then. And I said we'd have to do that later. The only thing you can do with that is, yeah, there's nothing really set up. Yeah, we're not set up for that today. Okay, so that's one way to get started there. We're going to leave this lay for a few minutes, and then we'll come back to that, okay? Now, this is another neat way to go. Right here. This is acrylic ink inside of these blank. So this acrylic ink is Amsterdam acrylic ink. It's really great stuff. It's in the pump markers from uh, Malto. Malto. And I really like these. So you can get a nice underpainting going over some of the stuff. You got to wash these things. Don't fly off on you. Hi, Mitchell. It's great to see you. Hugo then, got to say hi, but he's the one who waved. <laughs> oh, hi, Mitchell. He's helping me on the camera. We're going to come back to this one, too. But this is really pretty nice coverage out of these. This is the, ooh, that's the, that's not the white. No, that's not white. That's, that's the pearlescent. Pearlescent. <laughs> pearlescent blue. So you see we're kind of squaring off or create some angles here, some different gradients. And then we can paint over this again. Some gesso in a minute. We're gonna let that set just a little bit. So this is a great thing to do if you find old paintings at garage sales or at thrift stores that just need you want to just redo. Yeah, just just make sure that they're not actually valuable. Paintings. Yeah, check first before you paint over, or not. Do what you want to do. Not. You know. <coughs> so this is the this is a black gesso. This is from Amsterdam as well. Amsterdam acrylic gesso black. I'm going to put this on on here. This we're going to do some different techniques with. Well, I can't wait. I can let you set up at, home, at the house, but you got to make sure you use the camera to talk to me if you need anything, okay? Can I do that? There we go. So we're going to get some black gesso on here. I'm just going to cover most of this one up and, and leave a little bit peeking through. I like the idea of the layers that you're working with on these. <clears throat> you leave a little bit of the previous layer coming through, speaking about its history. And I like that fact. It's almost like an archaeological sort of uh, dig in that case, right? So I'm working conscious of the texture I'm creating on this as well, because that, that'll make sense when we come back to this, why I'm really paying attention to that texture. Guess if he wants to do the ice paint, he could. No worry about it. Down. I got him right now. Okay, so circling back, now we have that black gesso. That stuff is so nice to work with. And the, the cool thing on the black gesso is if you lay it out on, on the canvas, you can go back to like the pastels, and you've seen in some of my previous videos, we're doing the pastels and the chalks. You can do the chalks and pastels of light color over the black gesso. It's great stuff. I love it. It's nice and flat and uh, very workable. So let's see now. This one here, we worked a little bit with the regular gesso out of the painting. And now I'm going to try to get some acrylic spray on it. That sprayer is not working too well. They get clogged because I forget to put the caps back on. <laughs> Welcome everybody joining us this morning. All three of us are here, so you might hear a four-year-old in the background. I'd say that's a safe bet. Yeah. And we are working on old artwork, repainting them on canvas. And this is just some samples of the techniques that you can use. It's a lot of fun to use them. And now we have, I have in here somewhere, here it is, it's okay, found it. This is a watered down gesso, it actually has a little bit of acrylic medium in it, and then it has some water too, so it's a little bit thinner. And this is one of my favorite ways to repaint, is to put this on the piece. You're going to see some really neat reactions happening with the piece. Let's put that right on here too. And then we're going to go to this one and we're going to do a little yes. bit heavier. Okay.
Oh, it's getting messy already. Don't want to get your tablet. Let's go back. I'm going to take you back to the house. Take it. Put a little bit in here as well. All right, I've got to move the camera so that daddy's mostly in frame. Oh, I'm splattering on these paintings down here. That's not good. All right, you're mostly on the far mostly. left. Which side? You're over here. Over here. I'll be uh, right back. You'll be back. I'll stay over here until she's coming back. <laughs> so now we have some of that on there. And you can see the, the gesso, that watered down gesso, is going to react to the color of the, of the acrylic underneath there. And it's pulling some of those colors up. You can see it's bringing the gray up, for example. Now I can actually work over the top of that with some of the sprays and create some interesting techniques over the top of that, too. And we'll do a close-up of this in a little bit, too. And we'll see what's close-up. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Bring it a little bit up in here. And I can't see your, your questions right now, so you'll have to wait until Kristen gets back with them. So that's some fun ways to get going with that one. Now you can even take uh, some of the, this is a, a tempera paint stick and there's different sizes of this, but I really like these two. And you can see I can just draw right into the, into the piece, right through the gesso. And that creates a really nice gradient on it as well. Nice and messy. We like messy paint. Now I'm going to take and find a little roller like this. And I'm going to do a little something on this black one. I'm going to take some vibrant hot pink. And put that in there. Just roll that right in there. Nice little hot pink. Make sure that turns. And now I'm just going to roll her. Supposedly roll her. Doesn't want to roll her. Oh, it didn't work. It didn't roll. Well, we learned together, I guess. So now what do I do with that, hey? Eh? That's the big question. Put it over here. It didn't work exactly how I wanted. So now we've got something that's a little different than we had planned. We're going to adapt. We're going to adjust. And I'm going to take this out knife and I'm going to create some texture within that. Some nice shapes and forms. Because it didn't exactly do what I wanted it to do. And that's okay. That's what it is to repaint, create without fear. And I'm just using the tip of it to draw into it as well. And I can do it over here on this one. I'm taking that gray gradient. Bringing it down into there a little bit. Create some sense of depth in the process. All right, back. All right, I have no idea if anybody asked any questions. I don't know. Anybody ask me anything? What are you using to spread the white gesso? Oh, I've got everything. So I've got the roller that I used over there. I've got the palette knife I did here, the big, the big blade for the heavy gesso. This is thinned out and I just had a really big wide brush. Wait, can you show that wide brush again? Is that this, a this one is a, a Hakka brush. It's a Japanese style brush. But uh, the really good ones too are the paddle brushes um, from Amsterdam and Rembrandt. I think a few of them have them. But I, I like the Hakka. I think they're called Hakka brushes. They, uh, because they hold a lot of, of uh, paint or ink in them. It's one of the reasons I really like them. If you got a little too much paint on there, you can also get it off. You can block that off. And that creates an interesting technique too. So now I can kind of remove some of that excess and, and consider that part of the process of the paint. There we go. Get in there. Okay. And then I can transfer that over to the other paintings. This is why I like to work in series because then I can transfer from one to the other. You're going to see a lot of purple today because I've got a lot of excess purple paint. <laughs> I don't paint with it very often. But this is just towel. So now I can create a nice gray area using the towel. It leaves a little bit of improv to the process too. 
So you don't really know what's going to happen, right? Kind of fun, kind of messy. Creating art is all about the mess. So let's come down here now that she's here and can move stuff. So now I've got some heavy, heavy, this is a heavy body acrylic, higher end acrylic. And now I'm going to use, I'm just putting it right on there. I don't usually use a palette. The painting for me is the palette. And then I just have my handy palette knife. Any palette knife will work. You can create, now that that gesso is there and set up a little bit, you can create some really, really nice color combinations as you pull it down and it blends with that. See how it's blending? Almost a sense of water or something. We can even kind of do a different technique. Just, I'm angling it back and forth as I'm going up. So I'm tipping the palette knife back and forth so I can create a nice, like that. Come back to that one a little bit later. Let's come back down to this guy here. If you have a little paint on your palette knife, you can scrape it off and use it again. Come around. Oh, I hear. Carson, um, um, <laughs> and you can see carving into the surface too to reveal the, the former surface. Like I said, it's like excavation almost, right? I like that a lot, actually. So that's a, another fun way to do that one. Let's clean this off before it sets up. Let's see here. What was I going to do next? I got a question about varnishing. Do you varnish, and what is your favorite? Uh, I, I I have to kind of do some sort of a fix it or varnish. So I like to work with um, uh, one of the things I, so I don't wow, like to use. I'm coming back. <laughs> I, I don't like to use things that have a lot of aerosol sprays because of the fact that you know it can aspirate that it gets in the studio, the studio starts to stink. So I found and discovered the Spectra Fix. Um, which makes a number of different kinds of fixatives. This one's called a final fix, which is something that you would put onto the final. Uh, you gotta be careful you don't, you put very thin layers. This is a cautionary, I learned this the hard way. Very, very thin layers from the spray bottle and spring for the nicer spray bottle too. Uh, the other one has the droplets are too big and they can damage lighter or, or more fragile surfaces like watercolors or pastels that can splatter. Which is a cool technique if you want that. Want that. So once you do a couple coats of this and just follow the directions, then you can also after that put on a varnish. They have a varnish. It's called natural glass varnish and medium. Same thing with this. Thin coats. Several thin coats. If you do too much at once, it'll tend to honeycomb up a bit. Coincidentally, it's one of the ingredients I believe is honey. It is actually. Case and beeswax. Beeswax. Same. There you go. Yeah. So it's really great stuff. I, I like this too. Um, and then they have one that I use between layers. So it's a it's a it's a Degas fixative. So the, the Degas fixative that they have is sprays on in between layers. But again, what I try to do is spray it when it's flat, so I don't risk things streaming down. <laughs> that that kind of covers it. Um, you can, there's a lot of other varnishes you can use, but when you're a mixed media artist, you've got to really be cognizant of whatever you're putting on there because it can really damage the, your, your work of art. In fact, I struggled with that earlier today because I was in a hurry trying to get ready for the opening coming up. So now we've got some really cool stuff going on there. The sponge applicator used for the inks. I think she means the Molotov. Oh, oh yeah. So this is Molotov. This is an empty pump marker, okay? Ah, oh. And then the inks come in. This is something new that I've been playing with, you know. They've got a next size up for this too. This is the uh, acrylic ink from Amsterdam. I really like a lot. 
So now we can take a little bit of this. This is a acrylic watered down with some, also with some medium in it. So I keep these around to do some nice effects on. There we go. We're gonna let that do wander around on that piece a little bit. And now we have this black one. I really like what's going on. I hate to mess with it too much, but in order to show you different techniques, I'm going to. So I'm gonna take the, the watered down white again. I'm just gonna do a nice couple of movements over it, and we'll look at that in a minute. Can you recommend an acrylic ink marker or pump with a finer point? Oh yeah, so Molotov has blanks in a lot of different sizes, okay, that you can put the ink in. So that's one way to go. If you want to have, um, there's a lot of acrylic markers out there. Uh, I've been leaning towards the Amsterdam's lately. I've got, uh, they've got some smaller nibs and such that are available. They've got the wider ones here. If you want to go super wide nibs, these are fun, Biggie poster, or poster man, Biggies. They don't have a ton of colors, but they do have wider nibs than most of the standard, including uh, including Posca and also uh, the Uno markers too, which I also have here too. And I've done some stuff on markers in other places that you can see if you check out some of the other. YouTube and stuff. YouTubes. And... Used to be IGTV, but now it's just like a triangle. <laughs> so I'm just trying to kind of show you options more than trying to make a finished painting today as we're going. So definitely the questions are very helpful for yeah. us. Definitely. Any questions? Anything I missed when I was, was doing toddler interference? <laughs> well, I guess he's not a toddler anymore. He's for big kid interference. Big kid, yeah. Big kid. I called my baby this morning. Oh my God. You I got get school. Like for that? Yeah. Then he says he doesn't want to grow up, so I don't know. I don't know what to do with that either. I can kind of transfer around some of these different paints into the pieces. So I'm going from one to the next. Again, working in a series. I think it's kind of fun to do something like that. Can I oil a tripod? Probably. Because this joint is just really jerky. Just. Letting your mind flow with what you're doing. Don't worry too much about I, I'm it. looking for your question, Shabana. I'm sorry. I missed a lot when I was thinking to go back to the house. Yeah. And it keeps resetting. Uh, what if my palette is going the same in a few paintings? Do I go with the flow or do I have to be careful about going in the same palette? It sounds like she's been using the same colors. Oh, the same colors. Well, you've heard of Picasso's blue period. <laughs> I think just go with the flow. Is that what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I try to change. Um, one of the reasons right now is I'm getting low on some of the colors that I traditionally like. And when that happens, then I go back in and I say, what do I have a lot of? Traditionally, if I, if I get a lot of paints from our suppliers in, um, you know, we get the full range that they send us. And so we get purples and browns, for example, that I rarely use. And um, the greens I will use, but I come into the greens in the spring, so I'm coming up to green season right now. <laughs> Thankfully, when we're ready for some green. Um, so I don't know if there's really, I, I don't think there's anything wrong, you know, with working multi, the same color palette for a while. Eventually, yeah. you might get tired, you know, but do it. But there's nothing wrong with that. New question Have you ever used an airbrush to create different effects and textures? Years ago, I did airbrush when I was more into graphic design, when I did graphic design, but um, I don't now. But what I do use is some sprays. Spray paints. So spray paints of various types is one of the things that I do. I like the effect on it. I tried to show you over here on this one. In fact, I can do some more with that and show you a little bit more. Sometimes. Sometimes when you're doing the techniques that I'm doing, you need to allow the paint to rest for a while, little while. Because our shows are so truncated, <laughs> uh, we kind of just crammed all that. She's trying to turn. I'm, I'm messing her up. I tried to stay kind of local instead of the big piece today. I know. I just need to oil my tripod. So this is the Marabou Art Sprays. This is 
one of the few that I've ever seen that has the pump version. I'm sure there's somebody else out there with it too. I just don't know if they are. So this is going to be kind of a neat effect, or it should be. It's going to Maybe separate yeah, some of the. Close so that Okay, you want to ask away? So this is really cool. Now, if I waited a little bit longer, all of these cells that have been here, that have been created here, I don't know if Kristen can show you guys or not, would, would stay better. But because it's very fluid right now still, these, a lot of these cells might disappear and they'll just end up blending in. Um, but it's going to be a neat effect anyway. So you're going to have a mixture of that blended, uh, where it's all flowing right now. You can see it's flowing like a river. And then you'll have others where the cells, it kind of pulls color from beneath, separates things out. It's really fun. What is your opinion on sponge brushes? <clears throat> well, I have them. <laughs> I use, if you follow me for a while, I use everything I can possibly get my hands on. I'm so excited because I went down to the hardware store yesterday and I found this brush. I don't even know what it's for. They call it a roof brush. I don't know what a roof brush is, but doesn't that look cool? This is going to get used in one of the upcoming lives or recorded ones where I'm going to do some bigger paintings with this. I'm so excited to play with this. And this will probably drop some of these right into the paint, this, this uh, straw. straw or whatever the heck that is made out of. So here's everything. I do have some of the foam ones back here. I have a ton of brushes. I got this scrubby the other day that I can't wait to do. This is going to be used soon. What I like is where the soap usually goes. This is for dishes, right? I'm going to put some colorant in there and then I can squeeze that colorant out through the pump, push that out, and then it'll, it'll, uh, you know, affect what's, what you're scratching through. So I'm really excited to try to test this out. I was hoping to do this today, but then our, our, um, sitter canceled for the day. She had a family emergency. I hope you all wish her well. So we're looking forward to when she comes back and our, our heart goes out to the family there. So anyway, that, does that cover that kind of stuff? Now, here's an interesting thing I like to do is this, these are alcohol inks. And I work, when I work with alcohol ink, it's marabou. That's just, the, that's the ink I use. And these are fun to, to put right into this. I don't think normally you would add these to water-based media, but you know what? I do. <laughs> This is pretty cool. What's going to happen? I don't know if you're going to be able to see this too, Crystal, or not. Well, let me just get scooched. You're going to get a little bit scooched. You two might have an issue with it, but I hear the kid. He still has chair. It's clocked sometimes. There we go. Creating cells in it. This is a metallic orange. And I don't use this a lot in the winter, and the reason being is because it smells really bad <laughs> yeah. to me anyway. I think everybody uses it. So I'm just dropping little drops in. You can draw with it too, but then you, you risk getting it in your, in your uh, clogging the nozzle up. How are we doing? That's a good question. We're busy. We're, we're this. navigating. Check that out. Boom. Whoa. So it disperses the, the, the water and it will just create some really neat effects. And uh, let's see. So that's another fun way I like to do it. You can combine different kinds of these colors together too. And that'll create some additional effects with it. Let's see what if I go right about there. And that'll spread different color through it. So that's right into that gesso and the other paint that's there. And it does some really, really fascinating things. Just love, love combining mixed media with the pieces. Thank you for the likes and hearts, everybody. They help us. So I got some nice starts here, and uh, I may come back to this later. And when I come back to it later, somebody mentioned the acrylic markers. I'm trying to stay in those. I'll try to stay. You should see the look I just got from Christy. It's like, stop moving around. <laughs> So I've got the acrylic markers, and I, and I use several different brands, like Posca, uh, the, the Amsterdam, the Uno. Each one of the brands has different characteristics. The, the, um, 
One of the things I really appreciate about the Amsterdam's is their color pigmentation is really nice. Their color choice I really enjoy. Uh, the particular the metallics are very metallic. It's, it's really nice reflective quality on it. The nibs are a little bit harder, but the Pascas are a softer nib for me to use usually. They tend to wear down a little faster, but they also go over surfaces a little easier as a result. The Unos have a super hard nib. These are from Marabou, and I like these a lot. I've come to appreciate these, and I have to be honest, I didn't like them when I first used them. Yeah, I remember calls. that. And I complained to them about it, and, and, I, and I wish I had just held my tongue a little longer, because I, now I appreciate the quality that they can they offer. People sometimes ask, well, why do you have so many different materials? Because every material has, even, even the markers, there's three different brands right there. Every one of them has a different characteristic. And through using them, I'm discovering, okay, well, actually the Bosco doesn't work in this instance, but the Uno does really well, you know, for, for example. So I, I find that the need to use different material to get across the, the, the things that I'm trying to express, particularly now because I'm not a political artist. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I've had to come to terms with that. So anyway, I, to express what I want to express, I, I want to delve into that because I can create the layers with it. So as this dries, I can go back in with more charcoals and pastels and add those to them. I can add different blocks of color. In fact, I'm going to add some hot pink to this one. Right Which here. one? Purple? This one right here. I'm just going to kind of work it in a little bit. I think it needs a little. Hi, Ricardo. I'm long time no see. I'm going to use, I don't want to use too big of a blade. Use this one, I guess. Yeah, we make those aprons, aren't they cool? I like them. We got a company are on, online right now, are they? No. Okay, this is a little bit smaller. They're actually made in the Ukraine, so I can't. I went to put them back on this week and realized that my supplier was Ukrainian. Yeah. So, yeah, I gotta find you apron maker until that's done. Yeah. So, if anybody wants to know why they're not there, that's you why. <laughs> I hope they're okay, our supplier. I do too. I haven't heard anything, but anyway. Um, so you can see that the previous surface has kind of set up a little bit, so I'm able to now work it. Mm, got a good question about markers. When using wet on wet with paint markers, do you mind the markers being covered in other paint? No, um, but I'll have I'll, I'll have what I call sacrificial markers. Does that make sense? Ones that I don't mind, um, particularly the whites and the black, uh, I'll use in that case. And with those, the, um, I don't care. I'll, I'll have some that I don't care if I get them all mixed up with the paints. They can clog. You got to be aware of that, right? So that's one of the downsides is that they actually can clog up. So have a sacrificial one that you can then go back in and not care about it being. Did that answer the question? I think so. Yeah. Anybody have any other really good questions? You guys had some, some really good, good questions, questions today. today. Yeah. And again, if I missed anything, if your question didn't get answered, it's because I was in the other room. Yeah. Go ahead and re-ask. Will not bother me at all. Yeah. Exactly. Sometimes it's hard to get to them all. Get to them all. This is fun watching this one. Mm, watch the paint dry. That out of my seriously, if I had some WD for you right now, I'd be swearing. You got the lithium somewhere. Because it's great. I have it. Both phones are on the same tripod, but now the slightest movement, they shake like crazy. And so if it's even just a little dirty. Hey, uh, I was gonna. I was gonna mention this. Might be a good time while I clean the pound. You just told me this morning that. Uh, about the social media thing that we were right yeah so so i'm going to just give the, the background briefly we did a, a talk about this just recently and you can find it on our various platforms we said a, a little bit ago that about a year little about a year ago we noticed a significant change in our followers how many we were getting how much interaction we were getting with our, with our, our sales accounts. our sales dropped precipitously oh, by okay. like I would say we lost 70% of the sales. 80. 70, 80. You think of 80? Yeah. So, um, and, and the reason we finally figured out, we thought we did something wrong. We were banned or shadow banned or something like that. 
And the more we talked to other people, the more we realized that it was a thing that was going on. And then we kept telling people, no, there's a thing going on. And they said, no, you're nuts. The marketing bros were very Oh, God, the marketing us. bros were so aggressive with us. <sighs> they kept telling her wrong. And I, I stopped arguing because it's not worth it. It's not worth our time. Um, but this morning, we're vindicated, right? Yes, NPR. So what, what happened? What, well, the iOS change. You know, but Apple decided to change their privacy rules. But, but there was an article this morning that yeah, there confirmed. Was, yeah, there was actually an article that confirmed it on NPR that we were actually right. I, Facebook actually admitted it this week. So yeah. we aren't crazy. Well, and, we might be a little crazy. Well, but yeah. We weren't crazy about that. We're right. Anyway, so if, if you guys are out there and you're a struggling artist and you were making sales and not in the last year you haven't been, it's probably not your fault. It's just we have to figure out Web3. Everybody's trying to figure it out. Yeah. Right now, we can. So the acrylic inks are kind of fun too. This is the acrylic inks. I'm trying to find a place where I can play with this a little bit, maybe. Because it does kind of the similar thing to the alcohol ink, but not quite the same. If you can do that over here, because yeah. every time I go over there, I block our YouTube viewers. Oh, yeah. okay. I'll come back. All right, let's just try to put it in there. Let's see if we can get enough in there. Might not be enough white to make really. So a nice little eyedropper, it's fun. That's going to blend in there nicely. We can kind of encourage that in a little way with some spray water, if I can find more. And give it a little bit of a Oh, spritz. that's a fun question, because actually, uh, by kneecaps, I got a little frustrated when he started doing this this week, which how am I supposed to sell that? His question was, how much do you let marketability, marketability affect what you paint? He doesn't. <laughs> it's my problem. <laughs> Kristen's got to figure it out. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, there is nothing wrong with making objects to sell with specific intent of sell. There's nothing wrong with that. No. Um, and, and I do that. I've done that in the past. I, I don't do that right now as much. Although I did five paintings this week based on feedback from my gallery here, Lizard's Art Gallery, of a customer that liked a particular painting that had already sold. So then I'm going back and I'm trying to recreate that particular painting. Not the painting, just the, the style. The, the style of the painting. The problem sometimes is, as you evolve as an artist, things change, you know, on how you approach the pieces change. And so it's, it's been a little interesting to go to that and not involve my current technique or attitudes into the piece, and I've got some nice pieces. There's a couple four footers, a couple three footers in here. Well, thanks for all the hearts, Brad, from the Who. Anyway, so that, that's the market, my, my opinion on marketability. There's nothing wrong with doing it. You might as well do it. Give it a shot. Um, you need to worry about doing it that way. I don't know. I don't think you do. Someone was asking about using the paint markers, and I don't even know if this is dry enough to do. Like, except I have to be over here to do it. No, you can swear over here. Yeah. I'm just going to scooch over. I'm moving, I'm moving the camera, everybody. I will try to be smooth in that not the idea. Just got to find my sacrificial one. So I do a lot with the black. And the, a lot of you know this. The black. So I'm going to find one that I don't care about. I'm sacrificing right now. Just get it really juicy. And you can, so one of the things I do sometimes is I'll keep it pressed down and just let all of the ink come out. As I'm going, but you can see already it's kind of clogged up a little bit. So this is kind of the danger. This is a little bit lower on uh, ink than some of them. I mean, this has got gotten down to the end. They become almost more like a paintbrush at that point. See, I can still affect some change to it. This is a cheap canvas. Look at it. It's just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just fading right now. Right there. Just doing some nice little graffito marks. Wow, Brad, thank you. There we go. Just doing some more marky making, marky making. So you can use the, these as a paintbrush, 
and but then they're pretty clogged up. You can still revise them a little bit, especially if they're full. But uh, if, if you want to get that off, then get a baby wipe. Get a baby wipe. I prefer the ones without scent in them. <laughs> right? They, they can actually see the intention. Can they? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just fine. How do you know when to stop? Yeah. <laughs> that is an age old question, isn't it? Yes, it is. How many times have we heard that question? Uh, really for David, is it he knows? Or I or his gallery walks in and says, stop. So sometimes <laughs> one particular gallery, the, the one inside the Hampton Air, the team, Jim and Candy out there, I'll send them, and I'm not really sure, I'll send them snapshots of whatever I'm working on. And a couple of times, my phone rings a few minutes later. Like, please tell me you didn't make another mark. You didn't pay over that already, did you? <laughs> like, no, or sometimes yes. <laughs> uh, and and they, they, you know, then we go ahead and ship it out to them because they <laughs> feel it's done. For me, I'm very process oriented. So I'm always working a process. And, and so as a result of that, for me, the, the piece may never really be done because I'm always thinking about new processes. But that's also how you learn and how you push those boundaries. Um, sometimes I'll do a piece like what I was doing a lot when I worked on paper. There's some really early, early videos of when I was doing a ton on paper, large color paper. And I had some nice Japanese type brushes and I was just doing some flowing thin uh, paint ink like stuff and as a as a beginning to new paints I liked them so much that I, I kept them and, and, let, and said okay those are done I appreciate that I'm done um, other times the, the the flow didn't work and I, I just painted right over and did what I was doing this is fascinating here I'm kind of Got any question for you? Metallics here. Do you mm -hmm. ever initially like a painting and come back later and dislike it? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Or there's something in the back of my mind about the painting that doesn't click, and that's where the repaints. That's why we did today. Why we did four ways of repainting or approaching repainting. Um, I've even tried sanding paintings down, but if you're sanding uh, acrylic, it's not a good idea. You're creating microplastics. Um, and, and it also, you, you don't want to aspirate that into your lungs because that's very bad for you too. Um, so I don't necessarily recommend that. I know people do that. I think you're, you could scruff it slightly if you've got a gloss on your acrylic painting. Scruff it slightly with the sandpaper so you give it a little tooth. And then you can do the same technique. Bring the gesso, the black gesso, white gesso. You can even tint your gesso with an acrylic color or an acrylic ink and then paint over and create a new surface. You can see today we were carving through the different layers down to the original painting. We started and built up that surface, and I think we've created some really, really fascinating little pieces. I've got two good questions. Yeah. All right, so I'll get to both of you, I promise. Something you wish you knew as a younger artist. Okay. And then how can you tell if the canvas is cheap? Oh, uh, the easy one, the canvas is cheap by usually by the smoothness or coarseness of it. So the, the type of weave, it's tight weave. Um, also how it's put together as a frame, if it feels really light and chintzy, it's probably light and chintzy. Um, I like the spine ways instead of the staple ones. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad versus good. Uh, but this, the, the kind of gesso that's on it too. So pay attention. Is it gesso for oil? Is it gesso for acrylic? Or is it gesso for watercolor? And those are important things to kind of look at when you're looking for, for canvases. Um, I'm going to ask one of my friends what he's using because they do some very, very fine paintings. And I'm going thinner and thinner with my, my paint lately. And I'm not going as thick as I did here today on some of these demos because I'm enjoying the layer, the, the, the translucency of it. Ah, the other one. What was the other one? Something oh. you wish you knew as a younger man. Oh, I was trying to avoid that. He doesn't stretch any of his own canvases, no. The gallery stretches them. No, I don't, I don't do I don't stretch my own anymore. I paint loose uh, to some of the bigger pieces. Some of them I paint loose. And then we, we ship them out in two, and then they stretch them as they need them. I, I do pre-stretched ones. I just, quite frankly, go to Michael's or, or look for the sales. <laughs> But I like working on the boards. The boards create a nice hard surface and it's very resilient to just scraping and scraping at it. And there's other, again, other videos about that too. Check it out on YouTube over there or go back over to TikTok and Instagram over here if you're over there. 
check us out. Please subscribe. Um, so what I knew when I was younger, I'm getting to it. I'm, I'm just, um, I think what needed to be told to me is how much work it was going to be. It's a lot of work. And it's butt in seat. You've got to work all the time. Don't wait for your muse. Don't wait for muses. Don't wait. It's got to be habit. You develop the habit. Once the habit's there, it's hard to break the habit. As Kristen knows, I pretty much every single morning I'm yeah. out here. And, you know, sometimes you just want to snuggle in bed, right? And I did a little <laughs> bit this morning. It's unusual just kind of for me to stay in bed an extra hour. Um, but you gotta, you got to be aware, too, of your personal life and, and, and be good to your families. Um, but you still need to set aside the time to work. It's got to be a job. And I think that wasn't imparted to me, and I wish it had when I was younger, because I'd be a lot further along right now. I think that's probably the main thing, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Creativity needs to be a habit, not an inspiration. Yeah. Don't wait for inspiration. You make inspiration. Yeah. That means you work. You just work. In the days you don't feel like working, if you go work, it's likely when those epiphanies come. That's when... Boom! You get something new. This happened to me yesterday, didn't it? Yeah. Yesterday. <laughs> I did not. I told her I don't want to work. I stalled. I dawdled. I dragged my feet. I was two hours late getting to the studio. But when I did, I didn't want to leave because I didn't care. I was just like, I don't care. I'm just going to do stuff because I know I need to do stuff. I knew it. You know, yeah. That's, you know, <laughs> and, and some really, really cool stuff came out. Some of the things that we kind of play with today kind of came from that. So, so sorry, I keep getting distracted. by the got a new question here. for you. When painting on wood board, do they tend to warp, and how do you prevent it? Yes, they tend to warp. Uh, I don't do plywood. Uh, I try to avoid that. I, I try to stick with maybe quarter-inch underlayment because it tends to be pretty stable. Um, a finished birch is usually pretty good, but they can they can warp. What you can do is you can use trim board and use a backing board on it, or you can use uh, stretcher bars and attach it to that too. You know, glue and nail or screw it onto that. But I like to, I like the reason I like the boards is because it's quarter inch thick. I can stack a whole bunch of them, you know, up in, a, in an area in, until I need to actually display them. When I need to display them, we can frame them, which uh, Lizard's Art Gallery, if you're into Lizard's. It's a very good job of They did a good job. I, I, don't, I don't have any right next to me right now, but um, they, they've got some, they do the framing for me and they'll just frame, it's really easy to frame the panels, right? Yeah. So that's, that's what I do with the panels. Sometimes they'll work, and that's okay. Just let them work. But I will tell you that plywood, like half-inch plywood and up, um, when you get it really wet, it will want to cup and, and move on you. And so I don't work on the thicker plywood. You would think thicker would be better. It's really not. I mentioned there, it's hard to move. They're, they're heavy. They're really super heavy. Question. One, one more thing on the pallet. Oh, okay. One more thing on the pallet. One of the things I like is over there, for example, there's, I don't even know if they can see that. There's a door, a door blank. So I go and I'll buy these door blanks. You can get them like little 12, 16s, 24s, uh, 30, 32s, 36 inch blank doors. And they're great surface. They don't warp. They've got backing plates on them. They're a really neat way to get a big painting. So if you're doing a big painting, that's a good one. Okay. Got two questions now. Yes. Um, is oh. you use your life and what's going in it for expression of your art or is it just habit? Say that again. Do you use your life and what's going on in it for expression to your art, or is it just habit? Oh, well, it, it's it's both. It's both. Um, it's both therapy and necessity, but it's also um, uh, political for me now as well. More conscious housing, socioeconomic issues, war. This big six foot painting over there is about the war going on. Um, so. It's just, it, art is every, it's every part of my life. This is what it is. And when you're committed to being an artist, it's, it's, it's all, it's everything you do. It's, it's all encompassing. You think it, you feel it, you do it, it comes out in the art, whether you're sculpting, whether you're potting, whether you're, you know, all of that, right? I mean, it's just out there. It's, it's, it's who you are. It's like breathing. So yeah, all of life permeates what I do in the, in the studio and vice versa. It's like meditation. Yeah. So it's like a movie meditation. It's funny when he hasn't been in the studio for whatever reason, I like get grumpy because he's grumpy and I'm like, go, go. do work. 
Get out of my space. Get out of it. <laughs> any tips on how to get in with the gallery? No. <laughs> no, we really don't have any. <laughs> There's no trick to that. Um, I, well, there is a little bit of a trick. Um, just networking. And, and when you network, don't try to sell yourself. Just talk and be friendly with people. And uh, invite them over. Like today, we have the open house at the studio. Yeah. Right. Every third Saturday, it's consistency of that. We're inviting people here. It's no pressure. Come enjoy some like refreshments. Let's talk about art, philosophy. You know, hang out by the, the fire pit, things like that. Um, and I say networking is really number one. Networking is number one. Uh, the social media, getting out there and just posting and making sure you're hashtagging in your area is a good way to go. If you're just starting out, co-ops. Are an absolute great way to do it. The artist co-ops are an absolutely phenomenal way to do it. Another way are the art schools, art centers rather, uh, taking classes just for the sake of networking is a really good way too. Um, and and eventually, you know, somebody could notice you as you. But it's it's part of that communication, and it's really hard for artists. It's, I hear a lot of movement over there. Yeah, he's into the cheese crackers. Um, okay. At what point did you realize that you could do art for a living? I'm still working on that. <laughs> yeah, not all of our money comes from the art. Yeah. Well, um, the goal. That's the goal. That's the goal for we're, sure. We're on a plan. We. At various times in my life, I have made a living oh, wow. off of it, off of just that. Uh, but we have another company, a pond building company, Water Futures, and and um, it's a uh, thankfully has supplemented. But we've and we have the apparel company, the home goods company that is based that you, Kristen, creates the oh, the clothing wow. line. Um, and house and housewares and things from the paintings, and that's at muddypaw.net. Um, muddypaw.net. We moved that away from davidaustingallery.com, so check out muddypaw.net. It's fun, family stuff, athletic wear. Did I answer that question, or did I get sidetracked? I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm watching our child read our pantry, so. Oh boy, I'm we got to run out of my eye. Uh, what, I think I answered the question. Oh, galleries, right? That mm -hmm. was the thing. Um. The two that I have right now found me. Uh, I used to cold call, and I did get some galleries when I cold call, but it's they don't really, really hard, like and a lot of them don't like that. And, and you know, and when I owned two galleries, we would get a steady stream of artists coming in and out all day long asking about it. So you can a lot of galleries will have submittal online, so you go online and submit. Uh, that's another way, just just throwing yourself out there. They've got the online applications. You can try that. I have not been successful with that. Um, the other thing you can do are the art shows. That's that's creating your own gallery out there, uh, submitting for art shows. Um, Cafe is one that gives you like all the shows, right? Yeah, yeah. And then um, what's the other way? Uh, make your own shows. I know people were, were doing that too. There's another method of it. Right? So, anyway, is that good for the questions? Uh, yeah. Oh, you know, another way to do it too is to get yourself in the local newspaper. <laughs> yes, uh, definitely the um, publicity. You know, you talk to people, you try and get um, into the papers, and that really is. Uh, kneecaps, I, a year ago and a year and a month ago, I could have given you tips to sell on social media. Uh, these days, it's so much is going on and changed in privacy laws and the way we can actually target the bad that I I don't have any good advice right now. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're struggling to figure it out. Everybody in our business is. We were hitting all our sales targets until the Apple thing, and we had not recovered from that. And Most I'm not sure that not. we are going to. So, no. We're now doing social media basically to to boost our exposure to galleries. <laughs> Legitimize yeah. our existence, really. Um, there's some sales that we get, and, and, and you know, we grateful. appreciate. We're very, very grateful for every one of them that, that have happened. Um, but it's definitely not a, a be all end all for our business right now. Um, yeah. You know, we're not selling something inexpensive. It's a luxury product, which is also the you know art is a luxury product. It's not necessary. Necess I think it's necessary. It's not twenty dollar t shirts. It's yeah. a little bit of a different. Yeah, beast. Um, I will say that we had uh, a discussion about this just recently. I would say go back and refer to that. Discussion. Yeah, if you go to our YouTube channel, you can find uh, Dave and I discussing 
the exact exactly topic this for 45 minutes. <laughs> so. It'll give you some pointers, things that are working, things that aren't. Um, but a lot of what worked for us back a year, a little more than a year ago, don't work anymore. But videos are a good way too. If you're doing social media, the videos are it. You know, even if it's just mm -hmm. raw video, and uh, find find your pace with that. That makes a big difference. Uh, yeah. That's it. That's it. I think that's all the questions today, and we are at an hour almost. I think. Why don't you? Um, you want to bring them around to look at the results? Can they see much of it there? Yeah, I'll take them around. I don't know. Can I get the? I don't know if I can get the. The YouTube. YouTube one. I'll get you guys over there too. There's Kristen. I can't even tell if I've got it now. I'm gonna to have to turn around the. Yeah, uh oh, the something happened. You just you're on the wrong well, That's it. The browser you're on the wrong path. There we go. So now we can. I can't even tell. This is just some. I don't even know now. It's so chaotic on the YouTube one. So that's some of the stuff the, from the paintings. But anyway, we want to wish you all well. Thank you very much for coming to the studio. We'll see you next time, everybody. Be well, be kind to each other, spread kindness. This is David Austin with davidaustingallery.com, and that is my beautiful wife and assistant, Kristen. We'll see you next time. Next time, we should have the sitter back. It'll be a little bit better <laughs> production. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Can I just unplug this? No, you still have to end it on YouTube. You have to end it on YouTube? Ha, yeah. <laughs> everybody. Still trying to, there it is.